prerequisite for this tutorial is to have a really good understanding of HTML. So if you understand HTML, feel free, or if you don't understand HTML, I'm sorry, if you don't understand HTML, feel free to check out my series of lessons on HTML and you'll be good to go. I promise. I try and explain things as, uh, as good as possible. As good as possible. So anyway, let's get started with the CSS selectors. This is really the whole syntax of CSS, guys. I mean, once you understand this tutorial, uh, you're pretty much set to experiment all you like. And that's the beauty of CSS. It is really a simple thing, and it adds a lot to your websites. So we are going to have future tutorials on CSS, but this is, uh, this is specifically the whole syntax. And the whole syntax consists of selectors and a property and a value. So uh, anyway, you can see I have it up here. Whenever you're declaring something within CSS, you have to start off with the HTML selector, the element which it's going to be selecting, CSS is going to be selecting in the document, whether it be a button or a field, whatever. Um, then you have a property, something that you want to uh, change about that element, like the color, the background color, uh, the borders, the type of border, whether it has a line through it, a line under it, um, anything. I mean, absolutely anything. And you can change the hover states and the focus states and the click states and the cursor types. I mean, the list goes on. The next thing is obviously the value. That's more of a numerical thing, and that's the actual definition for what you're applying to the property. So if it was a uh, background color, you would specify the color with the value or if it was a font size as the property you would specify 14 or 12 pixels or if it was the color you would specify the color for the font I mean as I said the list goes on but let's go ahead and get started I'm just gonna show you this real quick and as I said if you don't understand HTML this might seem like a lot but it's really not it's not at all if you understand HTML you know this is not a lot at all so always feel free to check out my series of lessons on HTML and I think you'll be good to go but anyway let's continue on with this I show you here that I have a table and inside that I have one row followed by a table data and all I did was copy and paste this guys but inside this table data very simple I have a font tag um, as I said before in HTML you can put whatever you want inside the table data but I have a font tag and I have an ID which I'm going to explain and I have an ID for the table data IDs are very useful for CSS guys very very useful so I, I mean I have an ID for everything else up here it's the same thing just different elements I have another font out here same thing but uh, it's not inside a table um, I have oh I have a text field and I have a button yay buttons and a regular paragraph font with uh, or a regular paragraph tag. I'm sorry, but it doesn't have anything applied to it. And I'm gonna that's that's on purpose. I'm gonna demonstrate what that's for. So the first thing we're just gonna go down the list here. We're gonna start off with the paragraph tag, and it doesn't have it. So if you want to modify all the types of one single element or one single uh, yeah element within HTML, it is really really simple. If you want to modify, say there's maybe 10 of these paragraph tags, and you want to modify something about all the text within all of them at once, very simple, guys. All you have to do is type P, and then a left curly bracket, come down a space, and a right curly bracket. And inside here, that was our selector now. The P was our selector in CSS, because it was selecting the P, or short for paragraph tag in HTML. So now we're just going to apply a property, and we're going to say, oh, we'll make the color red. Color, and then we'll just select this default red down here. And, uh, you know, I think that's about it, just to demonstrate my point. And now you can see it modified this and made it red. I mean, that was very simple, and I can copy and paste this. Maybe add a line, or just, yeah, copy and paste that like four times. And there, I mean, it applies it to every one of them because they all have that selector type. All right, so I'm just going to leave one of those up there. And we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, the next one is something in a form element. So if you want to have those really nice form elements that you see in registration forms or login forms, you maybe want to get really fancy with it and add a couple of different hover effects and borders and uh, all those types of things, you can do that within CSS 
it's a breeze it is very simple and I'm gonna prove it to you so what if you want to modify I'm putting my my mind in yours my, or myself in your shoes for a second what if I'm thinking what if you want to modify the uh, background color of this text field see how down here I have the text field what if you want to modify the background color of it and the color of the font that's inside of it and all that I mean the color is up to you you can change that all day long you can color pick in Photoshop and just copy and paste it over here but what if you wanted to change that well um, I'm gonna assign it an ID and what did I assign it as an ID? Yep, here it is I assigned the text field an ID of well text field go figure pretty easy to remember if you're a coder you gotta always keep your IDs and your classes easy to remember always guys well if you have an element and you it has an ID and that's your method of selecting it just put a number sign and it's the same thing type in text field and left curly bracket come down like two spaces right curly bracket and now CSS will modify anything in the uh, HTML that has an ID of text field this is the selector and then in here is our property oops sorry about that this is the selector and then everything inside here is our properties and after that will come the value so let's change the background color to change it to like that blue and then let's say we want to change the color of the font we don't have to keep reloading once you get good at things you can kinda of just go off the bat let's say we want to change the font type for all of our text fields now let's make it Arial. I love the Arial font. It is actually one of my favorites. And the font size, let's make it like 12 pixels. You could specify a width, a height, anything. But uh, there you have it. <coughs> you come down here, you can see there's our text field, and it is looking pretty cool. But let's go on to the next thing. Let's just keep it rolling. You got the buttons. You want to change color of a button. You want to change the text. You want to remove the border. Um, God, what else would you want to do? You want to have a hover state, a different hover state for the button. Absolutely, and that is what we're going to do right now. So, I have an ID down here. What do I have it as? Yep, some button. Left curly bracket. You know the drill. Right curly bracket, and now we're going to apply our properties. Let's have a background color. Let's have it match. I'm just going to copy and paste. Let's have it match. Our background color is going to match that. Yep and the color of the font in the button is going to be that and yep I'm going to bring over the font family of Arial and the font size I am going to change but you see what I'm doing is I'm just making things faster I'm just copying and pasting from the values from my text field and I'm keeping the same color scheme so if I come down here there it is yay buttons text is a little bit bigger but I'm going to save this and I'm going to show you right now I'm just going to bring it up by clicking on the globe preview in Firefox and there it is oh appears that YouTube is down for maintenance that's not good anyway what if you want to add hover states to these you want to change the color and personally I hate that emboss style you know cheesy border and I want to get rid of that well it is very simple if you ever want to remove the border of an element in CSS guys just type border colon space zero pixels because you don't want any border and here's the fancy thing and you can apply this to any element in your HTML document that you want and uh, any styles it's all completely up to you just cr create another colon here and type hover now what this is is it's basically saying from start to end CSS is gonna take the ID whichever element in the HTML body has an ID of some button and then it's gonna we're going to actually specifically specify a, uh, a state. Is it going to be the focus state or the down state or the hover state? CSS allows you to do that.